My name is Kyle Gallatin. Um, I'm currently a machine learning engineer, former bootcamp student from the academy and current mentor at the academy. I kind of got started in my data science journey a little bit arbitrarily. I like to say that I tripped and fell into the space. Um, a lot of people have heard me say that. But basically, I got an odd job as a data analyst while I was finishing up my master's in biology. Um, and from there, kind of, it spiraled into this whole, whole data science journey. Um, I was self-taught for a little while, decided I wanted a slightly more formalized education. And from there, I went to pursue uh, education at NYC Data Science Academy, and then ended up getting a job as a data scientist at Pfizer where I'm now a machine learning engineer. In a lot of ways, my journey was similar to um, to a lot of other people's where you start off in this you know, self-taught kind of um, weirdly transient space. You know, There's so many resources online for data science, more now than ever, more than when I got into it. And for a lot of people, it's you know kind of starting off just exploring the internet, being like, all right, here's a nice tutorial that um, I think is a good uh, starting place for my skill level or something like that. And from there, you know, just diving deeper and deeper and until you feel ready for either something like, you know, a boot camp like NYC Data Science Academy or to continue your education in whatever way works best for you. Yeah, I mean, it definitely started off kind of the same way I got data, uh, into data science a little bit arbitrarily. Um, I was asked to be a mentor and I was interested uh, in kind of sharing my experience and being able to um, use everything that I had learned and gone through individually to kind of help the next generation of data scientists. I'm not gonna say it's entirely altruistic. I do really, really enjoy um, just kind of, you know, teaching in general and finding the right explanation for the right person. Um, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people in the bootcamp um, who, you know, everyone has different learning styles. And I think I kind of found a lot of ways in which I benefited from uh, finding my own explanations of the content or own, you know, sort of, I guess, uh, like technical specifics and things like that. And I really do enjoy going back and sharing those kinds of things with students, especially when it really vibes with them um, and really helps accelerate their, their learning journey. I would say that uh, I guess I'm required to be a little bit more uh, reactive than proactive is how I like to think about it. Um, instructors, you know, they prepare ahead of time and they're kind of going to be known as the um, subject matter experts for the concept or uh, whatever that they're teaching on that day. Um, in contrast to that, you know, I can get scheduled with meetings um, a couple hours before they happen, and it could be on any part of the boot camp holistically. And it's my job to sort of um, basically identify the problem the student's working on and try and troubleshoot it, you know, in as short as 30 minutes, uh, working with them through the problem. So I'd say that my job, well, you know, the instructor's boot camp is to provide a really, really general um, and I mean, of course, in depth um, education on the subject matter itself. I provide that really important one-on-one -on -one mentorship that you know helps students um, help students learn in their specific learning styles, like I mentioned earlier, and tackle a wide range of problems, big to small, that the uh, the students just might need individualized um, attention for. Yeah, so a typical session with me um, would be where a student would schedule a meeting with me to go over some part of the boot camp. I usually see it fall into one of three categories. One would be where they wanted to dive deeper into the bootcamp content, like go over one of the bootcamp homeworks or something like that. Um, another might be where they want to either shape the direction for a bootcamp project or just need some help debugging code for one of their bootcamp projects. And finally, one of the most frequent sessions are just around career advice and sort of resume review. People want to know about my story. Um, they want to share a little bit about what they're going through, and then I can provide specific advice and how they can approach that part of the process. The way it works is that students can book sessions with me based on my calendar availability through a mentor portal. Um, and I've been a mentor for a while and there was a, a point at which I was assigned specific students who, who I was with for the whole of their bootcamp journey. But even the students who now book me, you know, whenever they need help through the portal tend to kind of come back. You know, if they probably get comfortable with a mentor or I already know what they're working on for a project, it makes sense to book with me and meet with me over time so we can basically pick up where we left off on the last session. Um, so yeah, I do have a lot of uh, sort of repeat students or I'd say uh, students who I'm with for the entirety of the boot camp. But of course it's up to them, you know, which what portions of the boot camp they want to meet with me for um, and I guess where they found me the most useful. I usually can like, I guess, uh, keep an eye on what someone needs to work on based on the sessions they schedule and the questions they ask. You know, people are always very uh, upfront about what they think their shortcomings are 
Um, and I'm also trying to be as helpful as I can in terms of letting them know the places that they need to improve in order to, um, to get that data science job. I see it as well, you know, everyone in the bootcamp has different learning styles um, and all need to learn in different ways and all of their different strengths. What ties everyone together is that, you know, that, that desire, that job at the end of the tunnel um, and that data science career that everyone is looking for. Um, so I think that uh, what I try to do is kind of take all of the concepts that we work on and look at it through that lens and help students um, basically identify the things that I think and they think that are going to be most important for them when seeking a job. Um, and it's something that's super easy to do, you know, either working on their projects, working on their homeworks, looking at their resume from every aspect. It's, um, you know, can always help, uh, help improve. A lot of students, if we're going through a session, they want to kind of say like, all right, like what parts of uh, this code here or which of these concepts would you say come up the most in your job are the most important to you? Um, what do you look for in, in data scientists and things like that? So I think that, I mean, obviously having a full-time job in the space that they want to be in is hugely advantageous. And I take a lot from that, um, not just in being able to teach the content and kind of come at it from a real world perspective, but answer the questions and the things that they really want to know about someone who's already working in that space. Yeah, I think that it, like the value of the mentors is, is huge in terms of that one-on-one -on -one, uh, specific uh, learning style type of support. Uh, many students do need individualized attention, not because they're not going to be successful, but because they, you know, a general course content doesn't always lend itself to the way that every student is going to succeed. And having that specific support system and even being able for students to, you know, pick and choose the mentors which they think explain the content best to them um, is huge in terms of accelerating their learning journey. I like to take everything that I learned and um, give it back to them as much as I can. Yeah, it's usually, um, I'd say, like lacking background in any one of the core areas uh, or like core pillars under data science. You know, many students come from non-programming backgrounds and they see other students who do come from programming backgrounds and immediately become demoralized because, you know, while they understand maybe the mathematical content or something like that, um, they see other students who are just whizzing through the code, they can't get anything to work. And if you're not familiar with programming at the start, um, something as much as a small bug that would take someone else, you know, half a second to solve can stump you for hours or even days without something like my, someone like myself, a mentor, intervening and just helping you overcome that really, really tiny hurdle. Um, and, you know, likewise for people who don't come from math backgrounds, seeing a lot of, you know, very, very, um, I guess, intimidating equations, you know, on slides and things like that can very quickly tell students or, or you know, students tell themselves, I, I can't do this. This is not something that I'm, I'm comfortable with. Um, and it's really, really intimidating. And I guess my strategy for that, you know, is it's always breaking it down, um, breaking down a really, really large problem into smaller and smaller problems until we can just go over either one bit of code at a time, um, one part of an equation at a time, something like that. But there's always ways you can do it. Um, so that the student can understand what's going on. I'm a firm believer that you know anyone can learn anything given <laughs> given enough time. Everyone just needs their own, you know, has their own methodology, of course. And some people just want to like you know go through bit by bit until the whole picture makes sense to them. It's really easy to succumb to sort of the classic in imposter syndrome, where you might see students in the Slack channel or in other places and just get kind of demotivated because you're having trouble with the content. It's, it's not sitting as easily for you. People are asking questions that you don't understand. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not, you know, you don't really have a, um, a gauge of where everyone else is at. And as such, you know, many people just tend to like assume that they're therefore, you know, in the lowest percentile and not performing that well. So, um, at, you know, at that point, it's not, you know, I'm not teaching anything technical. All I have to do is basically assure them that no, look, imposter syndrome is something um, you're gonna face your entire life in, a, in the technical space. Um, I certainly, you know, it took me a while to get a lot of the content in the bootcamp and a lot of studying. You know, it's a lot to go over in the number of weeks at the bootcamp allots. And of course, it's something that's physically possible. Um, but everyone, again, learns in their own way, at their own speed. And all it takes is kind of um, sometimes a little bit of motivation and assurance that where you're at <laughs> in the bootcamp isn't a bad place to be. Um, you know, there's you're probably not doing half as poorly as you think you are. And all it's gonna take is some extra work and some extra time for those concepts to really sink in. Um, and which is perfectly okay for you know any student whatsoever.
Um, my main advice is just try it out. I mean, it's so easy for anyone with a quick Google search um, to you know, find a ton of really, really educational content. I myself, every time I wanna do something new, always start with just a quick search and find you know, a, a cheap course in any one of the massive online course websites and, and just take a little bit of it. Decide if I try to like the space. Um, I always caution people who are looking into data science to say that, you know, make sure you really, really love it because it is highly cross-functional. You know, there's math, um, there's programming, there's communication skills that you need to have. And if you don't love it, it's gonna be really, really difficult to do the amount of work required to actually master the space and, and really succeed well in it. That being said, the, the wealth of resources out there to the modern data scientist, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really massive. Um, and my advice is if you're gonna go for it and you know you truly love it, then really find the structured approach. You know, maybe it is something like NYC Data Science Academy that helps you achieve that goal in the best way possible.